Hello, and welcome to our superconducting magnetic energy storage demonstration video. For our final year project at university, we've been using superconducting tape to build a small scale energy storage device. In this video, we will give a brief introduction to superconductivity and how superconducting magnetic energy storage works. We will then show you how we constructed our demonstration device and used it to light an LED. So firstly, what is superconductivity? Superconductivity is defined as the absence of electrical resistance in a material below a certain critical temperature, known as Tc. On a graph of resistance against temperature, Tc is the point where the resistance sharply drops off to zero, and the material stops obeying Ohm's law. Here is a sample of superconducting tape. It has a critical temperature of approximately 92 Kelvin. This means that we can use liquid nitrogen to transition it into the superconducting state. Here we have taken a section of the superconducting tape and connected it to a power source. We have also connected a voltmeter across it to measure the potential difference. We have applied a constant current of about 0.9 amps. As you can see, as the tape is submerged in liquid nitrogen, the voltage falls to zero. Since resistance is proportional to voltage through Ohm's law, the resistance is also zero. This shows that the tape has been cooled below its critical temperature and is now in the superconducting state. This phenomenon was first discovered in 1911 by Kameling Ons. Superconductors have been used in a wide variety of applications since then, but here we're going to focus on energy storage. First of all, consider a small section of wire with a current flowing through it, as drawn here. As a result of the current flowing through the wire, a magnetic field will be set up around it. Now imagine a similar scenario but with three wires placed close together. The magnetic fields around each one will add up to create one larger magnetic field. Therefore, in applications where large magnetic fields are required, coils are often used. In the case where a superconducting tape is coiled and a current is flowing through it, as shown here, large magnetic fields are still generated. However, the difference in this case is that because the tape is superconducting, the current can continue to flow even after the power source has been disconnected. This means that the magnetic field is maintained and the energy is said to be stored in the magnetic field. This energy will remain there until it is discharged. The energy stored in a coil of wire with a current flowing through it is equal to half Li squared, where L is the inductance and I is the current. When constructing our coil, we aimed for an inductance of around 0.14 millihenry, which is equivalent to 35 turns of superconducting wire around the former that we used. This would give us around 30 millijoules of energy, or enough to light an LED provided we applied 20 amps of current. As we were constructing the coil, we wrapped the superconducting wire in Kapton tape in order to insulate it. This protected the coil against short circuiting. We then wound the tape onto the G10 former, making sure to keep the tension constant. A G10 former was used because it doesn't shrink when placed in liquid nitrogen. To charge and discharge the superconducting magnetic energy storage device, we connected it to a circuit by soldering each end of the tape to copper plates. When soldering, we used low temperature solder to ensure that the tape wasn't damaged. The copper plate was then screwed into the former as shown here. A wedge was also added to maintain the shape of the coil. The coil was now ready to be connected to the charging and discharging circuit. To charge the device, we used a 5 volt 20 amp power supply. Once connected to the circuit, the coil was then submerged in liquid nitrogen. When the power supply was disconnected, the coil discharged through the LED causing it to flash, thereby demonstrating energy was stored in the coil. We hope you enjoyed our video on superconducting magnetic energy storage. Thank you very much for watching.